Now today I'm going to talk about my little fly tying room. A um, few people on the channel have asked me how I arrange my fly tying gear etc. So this little video is about that. Um, this little room I only created last year. When I say I created I divided up my garden shed essentially and um, just put in a wall. This wall here and a door and um, divided off this section here specifically for my fly tying. Previous to this I've had stuff in boxes in the house and it's very inconvenient taking it in and taking it out and stacking it away and so everything is immediately at hand here which makes it so much more convenient and um, I can just come in here whenever I like sit down here and tie flies listen to the radio whatever and I'm not in anyone's way putting stuff out of cupboards etc. So basically what I did was I built a bench as you can see here and um, a few shelves and that's it and basically I just arranged my stuff around that um, here I have my magnifier which it's essential for me at this stage my eyesight isn't what, what it was and a lot of the flies I tie are very small anyway so the magnifier and it has a bulb inside that lights everything up anybody considering getting one of these um, it'll take a little while to get used to working your hands or, uh, or at the other side of it essentially and um, I wouldn't be without it now I find it um, makes life so much easier so I'll turn it off and take it out of the way the vice I use is uh, what I call the, the grab and let go vice they're um, an inexpensive vice uh, I think around 40 euros will buy one of them um, I've worn out two of them this is the third one the, the two I worn out, uh, I've worn them out, and I've been tying flies a long, long time. So one of these um, will last. They last for years and years, and you tie many thousands of flies on them before they wear out. Um, they're inexpensive. Like I say, you can. There's vices for sale now. They cost hundreds, and I believe there's some even out there for thousands. I don't know. Maybe if you want to spend that kind of money on it, well, off you go. But these, this vice does the job for me. Um, from here come across here to the tools that I use um, a few dubbing needles a whip finisher sharp blade two pairs of scissors it's wise to have two pairs of scissors this is an old scissors that I use for cutting wire and tougher materials and this one then I use for cutting um, feather and threads etc and if you use the same scissors for both purposes well then you wear it out very quickly and um, it won't be much good for cutting thread or feathers thereafter, so two scissors or two pairs of scissors is a good idea. Um little hair stacker, I've had it for years, um very handy for stacking deer hair, elk hair, etc. Roller lead wire, um my little I don't know what you'd call it, um a mount I suppose for the threads. I bought it from the local sewing shop, very convenient, all my threads, tinsels, wires, etc. are all immediately at hand um, one of the more useful tools up here then I have um, hard as nails super glue a couple of more varnishes there um, UV light and UV resin um, over here the bobbin holders loaded with treads one two three four there's Ten of them. Actually, there's eleven. There's one down here as well. So, uh, pays to have enough of them because otherwise you're swapping and changing threads. And uh, this is some of the hooks I have here. Um, fully mill hens, mustads, and variety of all kinds of hooks. That's just some of them. Down here in this box, I have somewhere in the region, I think, of about twenty thousand hooks. Uh, hooks of all kinds for all purposes dry fly hooks, wet fly hooks shrimp hooks clink hammer hooks basically every kind of a hook you could possibly imagine over here boxes of dubbin a box of super fine box of opossum believe it or not micro flash from hens great stuff, find this very good for small dry flies and nymphs etc and a couple of other boxes there as well um, here I have beads of every possible 
I think, size and colour you could imagine. The ones I most commonly use are the gold, the silver and the copper. I have them, you can see here in orange, black, tungsten, brass, here we are, mayfly brown, caddis green, steelhead blue there, very good for sea trout flies as it happens. Um, next to that, here I have winging material for dry flies, all kinds of winging material. Now, come down here to this box here, um, which was kindly donated by my son. Apparently, it is, um, according to the label here, it was used to house Call of Duty, which I believe is a video game of some kind. Anyway, um, I use this box to house some of my more valuable feathers and things like that, because... Um, have an ongoing problem here. Well, I didn't used to have any problem with moths. For those of you who don't understand the, my Irish accent, it's M O T H S, and um, basically they they get into feathers and lay their eggs, and then the um, the resultant larvae eat um, the feathers. That happened to me here a few years ago, where all my feathers were eaten and had to be dumped. So expensive to replace them so but I used to use moth balls which kept them at bay but moth balls apparently are illegal here now that well at least the chemical that's in them so they're effectively banned and I can't get hold of them anymore so if anybody knows of a good alternative to moth balls I'd be uh, grateful if you'd let me know now it was suggested to me that I use cedar balls I tried that and it was a miserable fa failure couldn't get any good of it there the moths didn't pay much heed to the cedar so anyway over to this have here some seals fur in various colors and moles fur and a few other furs in there the moths will also eat them hence the um, the safety case are keeping them kind of locked up if you like into this drawer here I have CDC Dear hair of every dear hair and I'll care of all kinds of colours and um, shades. Uh, hair's masks in orange and olive and natural um, partridge wings. Down here I have more feathers that I have to lock up when the time comes. All kinds of colours again. So, feathers, good feathers are not cheap. So it pays to keep them safe. Unless, of course, you can get mothballs. Anyway, um, I have all kinds of foam in all kinds of colours. Foam is a very useful fly tying material. Uh, into the bottom drawer here. And I have materials that I use from tying salmon flies tubes of all sizes brass silver different lengths um, Arctic fox fur in a range of different colors and um, this stuff here very useful for the wings on salmon flies it can also be used for tailing and stuff on trout flies oh there we go there's one of those cedar balls that I um, refer to. It's supposed to keep moths at bay. I think the moths even tried to eat that. So, uh, practically useless. So, um, that's my fly tying area for those of you who were interested. Um, like I said, it's nice to be able to just come out here and sit down and tie a fly whenever I want. And um, I hope that satisfies the curiosity of those of you who asked.